Faker, faker, liar, fake, dupe, bad cosplay. 1990 Toyota Corolla GTS said I want to drive it again. 1990 Toyota Corolla GTS. Welcome to the car version of a high school English teacher who self-publishes an unauthorized novel of Tetris erotica and then registers multiple accounts to get it above four stars on Goodreads. The L block waits patiently for the Z to fall, to enter into their public embrace. The L never knew if she was a Z or an S or two lowercase r's fused together like two teenagers making out and getting their braces tangled. All he knew was that he didn't care, for she would be there to complete the monolith, her squiggly orange majesty falling into place alongside him, the two erasing each other from existence, erasing everyone in the multicolored orgy from the face of the board. Because in the game of Tetris, as in the game of life, we all get off together. You just put a Truino badge on a USDM Corolla GTS last year, and tell me, has your dick gotten soft yet? Now the AE86 wasn't the only Truino. There were others, such as the E90, AE98, but only in Japan, of course. You can have an AE-98 Truino or AE-98 Truino if you desire, sure. Find a lawful importer. But if you body swap a Corolla GTS, tread lightly. Because car enthusiasts are catty shit talkers. And bad swapping will put you between judgmental iron sights. If you roll a fake Truino to Cars and Coffee, here's what's gonna happen. Folks will surround your Toyota and listen to you talk. They'll listen for two things, either denials or confessions. Well, what are you gonna do? Will you say, oh, it, it's not real, it's just a loving tribute. Or, will you say with your left hand steering wheel in full view of everyone. That's oh, a real Truno. We're all watching. You're on stage now and we're all listening. You knew the public's critical expectations when that Truno badge came from eBay. You knew what you were doing when you screwed it on. You knew what you were doing when you changed the amber marker lights from the USDM ones to the JDM ones. Really? You're doing this? You knew what you were doing when you walked up to the karaoke machine and, in full view of the whole damn bar, picked yellow lead better. Really? You're doing this? Okay. Okay, Mike. What's it gonna be? Are you, are you gonna just sing the song? Are you gonna enunciate? The lyrics, the lyrics are right there on the monitor. Or... Are you going to try to be Eddie Vedder? You're not. Don't try to sing like Vedder. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't. Mike. Mike. Don't. you? No. No. Is that a real true no? Yeah. Yeah, it is. In 1990, the Corolla GTS 4A GE engine lost the variable intake runners or TVIS system, but gained more compression, resulting in 135 horsepower for 1990 and 1991 model years in North America. The North American chassis code is AE92. If you see a left-hand drive Corolla GTS with Truno badges, and the owner is claiming it's an AE98, he's telling more lies than a child playing Guess Who. Corolla GTS, a car for someone whose dream was to be the most aloof person at the cool kid's lunch table. Brought to you by Delta Rune Fan Comics. All Susie, all the time. Corolla GTS, a car for weeaboos who hate other weeaboos. We need to talk about Corolla's shift linkage cables. You see, Honda does it correctly. They have solid linkage cables running from the shifter up to the front of the car to the transmission, but Toyota doesn't do that because they cheap out. They have to use cables, not steel rods. 
They should be using steel rods, but they, see that steel rods is why Honda transmissions always feel like they're connected directly right down into the transmission, even though the gear shift and the transmission are nowhere near each other because they use solid links. Toyota doesn't do that. They use cables, steel braided cables, which stretch and continue stretching over the years. So all these old Toyotas are kind of floppy and vague when they shift in and out. And that's the case here with the Corolla GTS. My AW11 was the exact same way. Prime build SW20s get around this by using weighted shift knobs and by tightening up those cables or replacing them altogether. It's 1990 in this car, sure, but it's really 1988 because the 1980s were the longest decade. The music, culture, and technology reached far beyond 10 confining years. The 1980s began in 1975 with Vangelis, or Vangelis, fully electronic album Heaven and Hell, which was also featured heavily in Carl Sagan's Cosmos beginning in 1980. The 1980s met its death in 1991 at the hands of Nirvana and their Nevermind album. Kurt Cobain killed the 80s, and in exchange the 80s killed Kurt Cobain. The technologically superior BMW 850i helped drive in that oak steak too. But nested vacuum lines would unfortunately continue deep into the 1990s. Sure, it's dated, but this 4A GE engine is revving like new with over 30,000 miles. Yeah, it likes to shift up high. Yeah. It doesn't protest when you're up there. A red line a day keeps the mechanic away. The 4A GE gets criticism because of its low power and low block strength. You know how Windsor blocks crack at 500 horsepower? 4A GE blocks crack at around 250. That's why Gen 4 3S GTEs are to Toyota 4-cylinders what LSs are to all small blocks, the cheaper power alternative. Yeah, but I made 650 horsepower with my 5.0. And because I pop three motors along the way, I'm more legit. Whatever. But this stock 4A GE has never been apart. Just oil, plugs, and timing belts. Easy. Because why? It's a Corolla still. You look up economy car in the dictionary and it's Toyota Corolla. You look up cars for college students and it's Toyota Corollas. Every guy goes through a phase where he thinks he can pull off long hair. And you know what these guys are all driving? Corollas. A Toyota Corolla is more commonplace than participation trophies that kids don't actually give a shit about. Because really, while some of the kids are about winning or losing, most of them are just trying to last until the post-game celebration or consolation pizza party. You see, participation trophies are for the parents. The parents who can't cope with the reality that their kid isn't going to be their draft day meal ticket. A Toyota Corolla is what happens when you don't care about the details and isn't going to have you in and out of advanced auto every weekend, searching for some obscure part your car needs now. I like to lay on my hand until it's numb, and then I place it on the small of my back while standing at the top of the stairs, and then I give myself a push. So it feels like someone cares about me enough to want me dead. This model had the rear drum brakes removed. Yeah, it's a, it's a GTS in America. We still get drum brakes because eh, who cares? But this guy replaced it with rear discs, as well as aftermarket slotted rotors, braided brake lines, and an aftermarket sunroof to replace the factory. Also, the clutch was replaced right before the owner purchased it last year and adding a new exhaust that was uh, fit to the original factory specifications. Although the floor plan was completely rusted through, but the mechanic was able to weld in a new floor pan from a 1990 Fox Body Mustang. There's no shame in that whatsoever. It keeps the damn thing going. And it can be super easy to shame people about what they're driving, because that doesn't take any effort. But it's far more rewarding to try to find the good in the commonplace. By our very nature as human beings, our origins are in the mundane. It's what we set out to do with our lives from those origins that creates the extraordinary. And you can find the extraordinary in something as mundane as the Corolla. Because having something reliable to take you to your nursing job or to your 4 p.m. rhetoric and comp class or to your kid's t-ball game, well, that's extraordinary in a mundane sort of way. It's why Toyota Corollas endure. And it's okay that this isn't the coveted AE86. It's not even the AE98. But I feel for people who want to make these things look at least uh, appear superior. 
because it reminds me of this time where I think this was the time in the 90s. It was uh, 1999. It was 1999, 2000, my senior year. In fact, this was over New Year's break. And I asked uh, one guy who was in the marching band with us, who I thought was part of the very popular kids, high schoolers, the guys. This guy, for my mind, was at the top of the totem, and I always felt like I wasn't deserving to be in his presence because I was so, so weird. But I asked him, I, I wasn't invited to his New Year's party, but I asked if I could go. And when I walked into his house and seeing all the other popular students there, I thought, I'm in it. I'm in the nexus of whatever this popularity is, and they're saying hi to me. They're not telling me to go away. We're all here at this New Year's party, and someone snuck champagne in. <laughs> and I thought, wow. I expected them at any minute to get into some sort of Simpsons stonecutter thing where, like, I thought the popular kids somehow controlled what was cool and voted on what was cool. Like, I knew they didn't, like, say what we're going to talk about, but I figured that somewhere at this guy's house and at his parties, that's where the joke started. And I didn't hear about him until like two months later when they weren't fresh anymore. So I understand why this AE8, <laughs> AE92 wants to join with the rest of the Turinos, the, the, the really popular Toyotas. Because at a glance now, we're giving it that street cred. And it is cool to see. Association works. I wish it didn't, but it does. Hey, GTS, the Toyota boys, the widows, they don't.